All right, I thought I would take today to talk about GEC's 66 calf roper pattern. I figured now would be a good time as any since this seems to be um, a very popular pattern at the time and it also seems as though GEC is finishing up this run. Um, they dropped the blue camel bone for knife ship free yesterday and I see that the stag is already shipping out. To the best of my knowledge, those were the last two cover types that needed to be released. So I'm going to kind of walk through the, the history of the pattern with GEC specifically. I'm not going to walk through the long-term history. I don't, I don't know enough about this pattern to do that. Um, I do have notes this time, so hopefully that, that helps and doesn't hurt me. I'm going to try to keep it short, but I'm going to try to keep it informative and I'm going to try to show off the knives that I have in front of you as well. So first of all, I'm going to start with what is this pattern? This pattern is referred to as a 66 equal in serpentine pattern. So you can see here that it's the same on each end. So it's equal in ended. And then I think you can see here that it kind of dips in and comes back out here. So it comes out here and it dips back in. So that's the, the serpentine part of the pattern. And I think you can kind of see that. All right, so this pattern first came out in 2010 with Great Eastern Cutlery. It came out in 2010 as a what's known as a mink skinner. And a mink skinner is a knife that has a blade on each end of the knife. So the mink skinner had a long Turkish clip or California clip point blade on this end and it also had a long California clip or Turkish clip on the other end of the knife. And these knives, from my understanding, were called mink skinners because they were, they were used by trappers that skin things like minks where you would need to do a lot of cutting so when one blade got dull, all you needed to do, to do is flip the knife over and pull out the other blade and you had another sharp blade ready to go. Now. I'm using the term California clip or Turkish clip, and I don't know if everybody knows what that means. So instead of it being a full size clip point blade, which I think everybody is familiar with, it would be a long, thin, slender clip point blade like this. All right. And after the mink skinner, and that was in 2010, after the mink skinner came the serpentine jack. And the serpentine jack was, um, also in 2010, late 2010, and a Serpentine Jack was a knife that had a clip point blade on one end as well as the pin blade on the same end. So you would open up the knife, there would be a full size clip point blade like this here, and you would also be able to open up the second blade and there would be a pit, what's called a pin blade as well. And if you don't know what a pin blade looks like, a pin blade typically looks like this and they come in different sizes and slightly different shapes but in general it's a short blade like this um, short spear point drop point type blade like this and it was used for sharpening quills originally now this is not a 66 this is actually a 76 gun stock jack so this is a different knife but i just brought it out to show you what a, a pin blade looks like so in 2010, the second pattern type to come out was the Serpentine Jack. After that, late 2010, early 2011, this actual knife came out here, which was the Moose Pattern Knife. And the Moose Pattern was actually um, a knife that has blades on opposing ends. Typically, it is a clip point blade on one end, as you can see here, and it has a spear point blade on the other, both blades being full size. Um, from my understanding, usually these, uh, these moose knives are on Stockman patterns. So this was the moose pattern and that came out in late 2010, early 2011. After that, you had the calf roper, which is what we're seeing come out now. And that was in 2011, the calf roper, the three bladed knife like these here with the clip point blade, the sheep foot blade, and 
the spade blade. So those three, those three blades were in the calf roper, which was released in 2011. Following that, they did another run of moose pattern knives in 2012, which this knife I'll show you is a 2012 model. Uh, here we go. I think it'll focus in. 661212, you can see it there. So this is from 2012. That last 12 means the year it was produced. And this knife was actually a gift from one of my knife buddies. I don't know if he wants to be mentioned, so I won't mention him here. Um, however, I'll talk to him later and I'll find out you know, if he wants to be mentioned. And if so, I'll mention him in a later video. So the moose pattern came out again in 2012. And they had another run, a run of calf roper slims, which this was the first time that pattern was run. And a calf roper slim is a knife that has two blades. One is a long, thin California or Turkish clip, like I showed you a little bit ago, that opens on one end. And then on the other side, you have a pin blade, which opens the opposite direction. So you have blades on opposing ends of the, the knife, kind of like a moose pattern. However, these knives here have two back springs. You can see the two silver bars. The, the uh, um, calf roper slim actually only has one spring. So the blades are very, very, very thin. So again, you would have your clip point blade on one end, a Turkish clip or California clip, which would look like this. And then on the other end of the knife, when you flip the knife over and open that blade up, kind of like this, you would have a pin blade, which again, looks like this. Following that release, they did another run of calf roper jacks, which were the knives with the two blades that open on the same end. It was the regular clip point blade and then the pin blade that opened on the same end. And then they didn't make any, not any calf ropers from 2014 until now when they recently released these 2017 versions. Now this is not all of the 2017 models, but it is a decent selection of 2017 models. Um, three of those are special factory orders. One of them is a general release, but I'm gonna walk you through all three, just the same. So here to the far right, you have a Tidiute 66 in green canvas micarta with an oval shield and you have brushed bolsters on either end. As you can see, the clip point blade has a nail nick and that nail nick, uh, or that clip point blade rather, is satin finished. You can see the lines there. As well as the other blades are satin finished. You can see that this sheep's foot blade is set and finished and I know you can see some scratches there but I use my knives so that's to be expected and you have your spade blade which also is set and finished um I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about something real quick I'm gonna deviate um here I know that if you know anything about multi-bladed knives you're probably cringing a little bit if you're more of a collector than a user but I just told you I'm a user, so I'm not too concerned about it. Typically speaking, you do not want to open the lower riding blade before you open this blade here, the higher blade, because what happens is when you open this little blade, you're pushing it into this blade here. So what happens is you're gonna get some rub like you see right there. Um, there you go right there, you can see it above my thumb. Now, I'm a user, so I'm not too concerned about that, but that's just a little something to keep in mind. If you don't want your blades to rub, what you would do is you would open up this larger blade here, the higher riding blade here, and then you would open up the shorter blade here, the lower riding blade here. Now, that doesn't really apply to the main blade because the main blade rides on its own back spring. So you don't really have to worry about any rubbing. Now, what, you, what I'm gonna to try to show here, and I don't know if I'll be able to, is as I mentioned, these secondary blades ride on the same spring. So what you can see here is that these blades have actually been what they call crinked. And you can see that they, 
when you open them, they appear to be straight. However, they are ever so slightly ground and or bent on an angle so that there's clearance between those two blades so that they can ride on the same spring and take up less space. So that's just a, a little uh, neat thing that they do on traditional knives. Again, they do all this, GEC does all this on machines that are 100 plus years old. So I think that's something that we take for granted when we look at these knives and sometimes we even dismiss them as old men knives. These knives have some, better, some of the better tolerances than even modern knives made on modern equipment. Um, but I'll get back to the knives. So here, this knife is in peach seed jigged bone. As you can see, it looks like a peach seed. And the color is dark chestnut. Now, this knife is a special factory order for Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, you can see they chose to go with a propeller shield, which um, another company decided to go with that as well. They have the lined or ringed bolsters, and they're also pinched, so you can see a little divot there. These are polished. They're not satin finished. The main blade is still a clip point. You can see it has a long pull, but the blade is still satin finished. The secondary blades on all of these knives have nail nicks. And here on this knife, these blades are satin finished as well. So you can see here the satin finish. Um, now I have not used this knife and maybe one or two of the other ones. So it might be a little bit hard to show because of the oil on the blades. But I'll give you a better looking at that, better look at that jigging. There you go. Um, here, this knife, and this is one of my favorites. This is a special factory order by the Knife Connection. And this knife is done in desert ironwood. Um, now, I don't know a lot about desert ironwood, but what I do know is that you can't just go into the desert and cut down an ironwood tree and bring the wood out. Apparently, there are rules and regulations on um, gaining access to this ironwood. So it is a, a, I don't know if it's an endangered species, but it's a species that is uh, limited. So that's why you don't see it used on a ton of knives. Um, this is one of my favorite 66s, and this would have to be one of my favorite cover types. I don't know how well it's coming across in video, but this wood just comes alive when it shines in the light. And you can see it there. It's just, it's just very, very, very nice looking wood. Um, here, these bolsters do not have rings or lines. However, they are polished. You can see they're polished. Again, propeller shield, which is also polished. Um, main blade has a nail nick. The main blade is satin finished. You can see here the worn cliff blade satin finished and same thing with the spade blade satin finished the final blade i have here and i do have um a reserve with collector's knives for a um, stag 66 but i have not received the invoice for that yet so i'm assuming that um, mike has not received them as of yet this here is a special factory order by dlt trading and this is smooth autumn gold bone. Um, there was a pretty fair variation in these. I bought two of them so I could pick the one I liked the best. I really like the lighter ones in this run. You can see the front, the uh, show side is um, very light. The back is fairly light. There's a little more color. However, with time that'll fade. Um, now DLT trading, they always use the oak leaf shield on their special factory orders. So you can see the oak leaf here. These are ringed and pinched bolsters. I don't know if I described that. Pinched means that there's a little divot on the end of the bolster. And you can see that on either end. These are polished. The main blade does have a long pull. You can see that these blades are set and finished as well. So clip point blade sheet foot blade, satin finished, and 
spade blade, also set and finished. These knives, um, I, I find them very useful, very good size. Um, I know that some people don't prefer multiple bladed knives. I did not prefer multi-bladed knives when I began collecting traditional knives either. However, over time, I did um, come to find, find myself liking more multi-bladed knives. Um, one of the things that I didn't like was I felt as though the tang of the knives would stick in my hand. Um, however, I didn't find that to be much of a problem after a while. You don't really think about it and you adjust your grip as, as you need to. Um, I also know that these knives have been very sought after uh, lately. Um, there are still some places with these in stock. You, I don't believe you can buy these anymore from DLT Trading. I believe that there are some more of these at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. You have to call in. I don't believe they're listed on the website. And here, the Desert Ironwood, I believe there are a few left on DLT Trading. Again, this was just a general release. So any place that carries Great Eastern Cutlery knives should have some of these knives in stock. Um, or, or you should be able to find one in stock somewhere. I guess that's a better way to say it. So I hope this video was informative. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, thank you, and I'll catch you on the next one.